Welcome to Conversations from St. Norbert College, a program that encourages good discussion in our community on today's local and global issues. Now, your host for Conversations from St. Norbert College, author, professor, and nationally known sports economist, Dr. Kevin Quinn. Welcome to Conversations from St. Norbert College. I'm Kevin Quinn. Our special guest is Evan Siegel, a staff photographer at the Green Bay Press Gazette, and we'll discuss his career and photo exhibit, Evan Siegel, Still Moments, Peak Action, currently on display in the Bear Gallery of St. Norbert College's Bush Arts Center. Among Siegel's career highlights have been shooting Super Bowl 45 and the 2006 Torino Winter Olympic Games in Italy. Evan, welcome to the program. Thank you. Well, let's start off with, you know, the Super Bowl. Uh, what was that like? It was uh, surreal. It was uh, seven days, but it felt like three weeks packed into one one day, basically. So uh, it, it was a lot of fun. Um, you know, everyone wants to cover the big game, and I'm lucky enough that it finally came. So, yeah. So, uh, I, you know, it, it looks like a, a circus uh, from the outside, and I think a lot of people sort of tune out, especially the, the, the second week when everybody's there, they have the goofy media days, et cetera. Yeah. But what was that like? being there. You were there for Media Day. Yes, and th that was one of the things I really wanted to cover. Um, you always hear the stories about Media Day, um, all the celebrities, the different TV regions that come in, and uh, it was crazy because we, I mean, first, um, the weather. I flew into Dallas and it was 65, and in a matter of 24 hours it was like 30, and there was snow on the ground. So we, you know, we went out to the bus, which made it an even longer day because of the travel down in Texas, um, where there's usually no snow. So the, the media day was a total circus. You know, after security, you went in, and basically, you know, the Cowboy Stadium is huge as it is, and then seeing all the little venues with the players, and then everyone just sprints to where they want to go, and it's chaotic. You know. Well, they've done 45 of these things. How do you find something fresh or new that uh, maybe somebody hasn't seen before? Uh, that's it's kind of hard. You know, it's more like moments. Um, like for media day, you know, just going around and just you know getting people joking around. Um, I had a pretty nice image of Donald Driver trying on like a fur coat, <laughs> being funny because he was so cold uh, inside the stadium, and you know like. You know, Troy Palomalo putting the wig on, and then Clay Matthews putting his wig on, and other players. So there's a lot of humor. Um, you know, people dancing to like the Spanish television network. And so, you know, just something like that. You're just trying to find a funny moment. And, uh, you know, like I said, it's totally chaotic. So it's usually a challenge, too. Do you have a favorite picture that you took uh, there, that one that you'll remember forever that captures a moment for you? At Media Day or the Super Bowl? Just in general. In, the in general. Uh, the, the Super Bowl was, obviously the game itself was great. Um, probably my favorite image from the Super Bowl was, um, you know, within the first half when Nick Collins intercepted the ball, ran back, and basically went down to his knees and put his arms out. And it would happen right in front of me. The reason why I like that so much is um, there's so many cliche images that you can get out of a Super Bowl. You know, as a sports photographer, you always want to find the peak action. Um, you know, a really, really good play that's clean. There's not a lot, you know, distraction in the background. It really separates itself from different action images. Um, this one is being that I had to sit in a spot for five hours to hold my shooting spot. Um, I was lucky. I always say with sports photography, it's being prepared, being lucky, and having great timing. So in this case, uh, basically I was lucky um, because I sat in one spot the entire game, and you never know, you know, what's going to happen on your side of the field. So again, with him picking that off and running right towards me and falling down on his knees and capturing that image, and then after it was all done. I looked around and there was not a lot of people by me. I knew that, you know, it was going to be a great image. Well, how many shots do you take during a typical football game? I mean, you know, most of us we pick up the newspaper and we see the the picture of someone catching a ball in the end zone or, or whatever. But uh, maybe, you know, even here in Green Bay, three or four maybe run. Maybe that's it. Right. But I'm sure you take more than three or four pictures. Yeah, usually from a game, it's in the thousands. Thousands. Um, and. 
you know, the way this industry has progressed with cameras and the technology, I can shoot a game, but while I'm shooting, I can tag the pictures in the back of the camera. So then when I'm done with a half or a quarter even, I'll come back and I'll just select the tag pictures and edit them. So even though I'll have a card where I've ingested maybe about 800 pictures, I'll have probably about 124 tagged, some of those in a sequence, and then I'll go in and pick the best image. And, you know, I actually came into the business right on the verge of the transition to digital photography. So, you know, if you were to compare someone shooting 12 rolls of film, 34 exposure or whatever, um, it would take forever to edit all those pictures. I can do it within a matter of an hour or two to edit a whole game's worth work. So, so you're done basically an hour or two after the game. You're able to send the stuff into your editor, and then your editor decides which of those uh, are going to run the next day. Huh? Yeah. Uh, usually, we have the uh, creative control on our end, and then we'll pitch for photos that you know this is really good. The good thing is, whenever you're covering a big game like the Super Bowl. You know, myself and my fellow colleague, Corey Wilson, who's a staff shooter, and a photo editor, Jim Matthews, we work as a, a unit. Um, so, you know, specifically the Super Bowl and other big games, we won't even edit our own work. We'll have, we'll hire a runner, and mm -hmm. they'll come out and grab our cards, and then Jim will ingest the pictures. And Ingest? It sounds unhealthy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ingest them into, like, a photo archiving, you know, system where he can edit and caption the photos and again it's easier for him because the pictures are all tagged. Oh wow. Um, well, let's talk a little bit about the uh, the Olympics. Okay. This was the Bodie Miller Olympics, is that correct? Yes. Uh, and uh, that must be an even bigger zoo than the Super Bowl. Yeah, actually you know the Olympics really prepared me for a lot of things. Um, I was lucky of the, to have covered the Olympics in 06 so you know, I was a lot younger than the Super Bowl. Um, and I'll never forget the advice I had from a buddy at USA Today, Gannett, um, Jeff Franco. He, you know, I was actually going to the Olympics and I didn't have my passport yet. And he says, you will, he's like, you're a photojournalist, you'll find a way to get it done. Of course, I got it done. And those words stuck with me the whole Olympics because I wanted to have the best shooting spot. And again, that... I would go to an event five hours early and sit in the spot so I could have that shooting spot. You know, that's why I always, you know, height doesn't always come into play <laughs> with me also. I'm a shorter guy, so you need to get there first. Um, so it was a lot of fun. Um, compared to the Super Bowl, the Super Bowl was much more crazy. Really? Yeah, it was pretty crazy. Um, just because of the time frame, the Olympics is, you know, over a two-week period, so... Um, but then you near know, the gold medal games and stuff, it got pretty crazy. But yeah, that, it was a, the Olympics was a lot of fun. What were your favorite shots that you took uh, when you were there? Uh, probably my favorite shots from the Olympics. Um, when I was there, I was part of the downtown team. Um, USA Today split teams up, being at the mountains were so far away. Um, so I was part of the downtown team, so I covered hockey, um, curling. Uh, long track speed sta skating, and they also had short track speed skating and figures, figure skating, all that stuff. Um, I specifically concentrated on hockey, men's and women's, um, long track speed skating, and curling. And then one day, I on my day off, I went up to the mountains and uh, shot snow cross. Um, on your day off. On my day <laughs> off. And uh, probably one of my favorite images from that... Uh, event was um, just a photo of some speed skater, uh, woman speed skating, and I used a slow motion pan um, to give it that effect, and the colors are really cool. And, you know, there's there a lot of great moments for the Olympics. You know, one was covering Joey Cheek when he won the gold medal, um, which was unexpected. Um, and then covering, um, you know, the, the last day, the gold medal hockey game between Finland and Sweden. Um, that was a really long day because I went early to the venue, so I shot hockey, and then I went right to closing ceremonies, and then I went right to the airport. So I was basically up for about a day and a half straight. Um, so again, long days, but totally worth it. 
So you shot curling. Curling, yes. Do you need a slower shutter speed to do that uh, correctly? No. <laughs> no, actually, you need a slow shutter speed so you can try something new. <laughs> um, shooting a curling game is very long, and uh, it's kind of funny because I actually had a buddy who was over there from Associated Press, Morgash, Morgash and uh, he shot curling the entire Olympics. So I went there, I think, maybe three times. The first time I went, I had tried everything, slow shutter, panning, reaction, thinking it was my only time going to do curling, and they liked my stuff so much that they sent me back <laughs> three other times. So, you know, it, it, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's a great sport. They really get into, you know, the fans are tremendous, and it was pretty cool. It is sort of, uh, what, you know, you look at the Olympics, and there's not too much that the average guy eating chips on his couch can relate to, but the curling, so I could do that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like watching professional bowling. Yeah. <laughs> but it is, I mean, it's very popular in this state, especially the yeah. northern part of the state. Well, let's talk a little bit about uh, your job at the Press Gazette, and you're a staff photographer. So what does that mean? What, what, what do you do? What's your typical day like? It, you know, it really depends. Um, like I said, you know, I, I usually work the night shift, so I, I get a lot of sports thrown at me, which is great. I love shooting sports. But I do uh, everyday assignments from, you know, business profiles to events, festivals, um, feature stories, spot news. Anything that happens, basically, we're prepared to shoot. Um, basically, live out of my car with my gear and my laptop and, you know, assignments are thrown at me via email. So some days I'm in the office for an hour. Some days I'm not even in the office. Some days I'll come in and hang out. I think it's always good to go in and try to talk to the reporters and, you know, the editors and get a better grasp on the story. Um, but pretty much everything, you know, sometimes it's really weird. You know, you could go to a car accident and then next thing you know you're shooting at a nursing home or a festival. So it's bizarre. A lot of fun. Well, you know, you're uh, one of a a new generation of uh, journalists that, that are coming up, and uh, you have the benefit of guys like Tony Walter and Rich Ryman and some of these other folks. Um, what you, They must have some pretty interesting stories that they uh, that tell you about the good old days, which probably weren't as good as they are old, but uh, yeah. that must be kind of fun. Uh, I mean, they must appreciate some of the fresh, uh, the fresh blood in the newsroom. Yeah, you know, it's always fun hearing stories. Uh, Tony Walter's a good guy. Um, he's got a lot of great stories. Um, sometimes he'll tell it to you four times that he might not know. <laughs> he's kind of like that uncle that you know always brings up the story, but he's got some great stuff, especially with when he covered the Packers and stuff like that. Yeah, they're, you know, we have a, a great department, and there's a lot of knowledge and assets, and you know, even Tony and Rich, and you know, everything is geared more to, towards multimedia and stuff like that. So. It's great to have that balance because um, I'm kind of old school. You know, I really like having a newspaper in my hand. I love reading stuff and, of course, looking at pictures. Um, but yeah, they're great guys. Well, you're you're the president of the Wisconsin Newspaper Photographers Association. Yep. Did I say that right? Yeah. I mean, that's pretty prestigious for uh, somebody fairly early in their career. Tell us a little bit about that organization. Yeah, it's a do. it's a great organization. Um, you know, members throughout the whole state. Um, you know, even though I'm president, it's all volunteers, so you, you put in as much as you can. Um, but it's great, you know, we have a convention every year and we bring people in. You know, we brought Jack Gruber from USA Today and, you know, Jim Beaver from the Green Bay Packers, mm -hmm. you know, he spoke, and David Joles from Minnesota Star Tribune. Uh, we just recently had in last year. And, it, you know, it's more of an inspirational, gadget than anything to share your work to see other people's work um, to bond and you know kind of have a network within the state um, you know the association's been here forever it's one of the first ones in the nation um, so it, it's great to be a part of at their conventions does everyone bring a camera and then you have to watch out to, you wind up on somebody's Facebook page <laughs> you know there's a funny saying a good photographer always has a camera with them yeah I bet <laughs> and uh, sometimes I miss that a little bit sometimes you know sometimes it's nice to sit back and watch though too <laughs> be um, off the clock yeah but you yeah it, you always see someone with a camera and you know taking pictures or 
it's kind of funny seeing someone speak and we'll have someone up there taking a picture right in their face and you can hear the shudder <laughs> and you know <laughs> sometimes it happens to you too so I, I can imagine you were watching conversations from st norbert college and our special guest is photographer evan siegel of the green bay press gazette evan let's talk a little bit about your uh, your show here it's uh, called still moments peak action tell us about that well actually you know i was asked to showcase some of my work, which was awesome. I mean, what photographer doesn't want their picture blown up 42 inches? Um, so it's kind of cool. You know, it basically the, the show um, showcases some of my favorite photos from the Super Bowl, 45. Um, and then it also showcases, one of my favorite things to shoot at the newspaper is our Player of the Year portraits. Um, so it's a combination of both. And I think it's kind of cool because it shows, you know, the sports action at a very high level. And then it, you know, kind of shows to intimate sessions of portraits and creating images and showcasing local athletes. Local high school athletes mostly? Local high school athletes, yes. And how many of those do you do every year? Uh, basically, we, we divide it up within the newsroom. Um, so, you know, there's times where I've shot in a season eight, like for the uh, spring season, I'll shoot like eight, which can be a mental challenge in a way. Um, sometimes it's like one or two, but we, we always have them after each season is over. So the fall, winter and spring season. So, you know, there's certain sports that I might have an idea with that I'll tackle. Um, so. so what makes for a good portrait? Uh, good portraits, that's a good question. Um, basically, the, these images um, are a combination of trying to showcase the athlete in a different light, at least the way I approach it. Um, I never want to, you know, shoot an athlete in the ob obvious setting. You know, you think basketball player, they need to be on the court. You know, that's, I think, where my approach comes in a little bit different, out of the box thinking. I always like to take them out of the norm try stuff new. Um, the funny thing is, is that, you know, there's so much time that goes into planning these portraits and I'm always working with the athlete. And it's kind of funny because the parent will come along or a friend to help out or watch, which is kind of cool because it breaks the tension a little bit. No one wants a camera stuck in their face and over and over again. And, and uh, but yeah, I like to, you know, my approach is a little bit different. Um, you know, I've taken photographs of athletes on Lake Michigan in the middle of December to junkyards to, you know, fields and junk, yeah, <laughs> fields and um, basically, it, you know, it's an outlet for me to show the creative side of my work. The, uh, the and you have several of these in the show. Yes. Can you talk about some of the ones that you, uh, that you chose? Yeah, the most recent one, probably my favorite one that I've taken over the years, is the one I just photographed of uh, Green Bay Notre Dame's Allie Woodward. Um, if no one really knows her story, she basically ran track, very successful in track, um, decided to leave tennis and went cross country and broke all kinds of records. Um, and she's on a full ride scholarship to Oregon University oh, right wow. now. So she's, she's the real deal. And what is great is that when you can take an athlete of that caliber, you can try to show different sides of her because, you know, Allie's a pretty, she's a very nice, um, quiet girl from what I know. So I wanted to really show maybe the different side of her. Um, so basically I came up with this idea of shooting athletes in the junkyard. Um, <laughs> the, the thing is, is it's very hard to shoot in a salvage yard because no one really wants to see, you know, what's inside there. You know, I don't know the reason, but it's very hard. Um, luckily I was able to, let salvage yard let me you know do a couple photo shoots um and it was great so i told ali my idea hoping she'd like it and she loved it and next thing i know i was in a junkyard basically um the funny thing is is that it rained the day or actually hours before i was ready to do the shoot so there's puddles and you know i'm walking around in mud trying to set this up you know, the, uh, so basically what I wanted to do is I want to, you know, kind of a metaphor a little bit with the whole concept of twisted metal, you know, just broken glass, really run down. Um, 
So I met Allie there and told her my idea. She was really stoked and happy, and I think she was really excited to show this image. Um, we really tried to set the bar high as playing in this photo as if it was run in a magazine or like Sports Illustrated type feel. And I had a lot of things that worked for me that day because of the cool storm clouds. And um, I ended up having Ali standing on a broken up and pickup truck that was like split in two. And I think the best thing is, is that I told her what I wanted to do and she's like, yeah, let me stand up on the hood here. And she's like, do you want me to rub mud all over myself? <laughs> and I mean, these are things that you really want to add different elements and textures and layers in your photograph. Whenever you think of an athlete, I don't think of someone coming on with nice, their hair done nicely. I think of like eye black, you know, sweaty, muddy, you know, gritty, all that stuff. And that's kind of what the junkyard really um, displayed a little bit. And she added the factor just being the athlete that she is with her, you know, her the muscles and, everything. So it was probably my favorite, the colors, the composition, the subject. And, you know, Allie was a great subject. And, you know, they're saying you can, if you talk to talk, you can walk to walk or walk to walk, talk to talk, whatever it is. She does that. So it worked out really well. Wow. Well, you know, uh, when I was a kid, uh, you know, our there was Sports Illustrated. Of course, there was Life magazine that occasionally would take pictures of folks. But for the most part, they were pretty boring kinds of pictures, you know, the baseball card kind of kind of pictures. Now it seems that you have ESPN that's pushing the envelope. Um, you know, of course, on, on the internet, you know, you can get you can see pictures of almost anything all the time. In fact, it's, it always shocks me when I try to do uh, an image search for a person or something like that, and there's nothing there. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's that's hard to imagine. Yeah. But um, you know, the, you're you're sort of in the middle of that then with some of this more innovative stuff. Who, who are the folks that you really admire, who that, that you would like your work to be next to? You know, it, there's so many great photographers out there. Um, you know, I always tend to look at people within the Midwest just because I can relate or I'll see how they shot something and be like, hey, you know, maybe I can try to put that into my work or vision towards assignments. Um, one of my favorite photographers is Scott Strozani from the Chicago Tribune. Um, he has a different, you know, look at stuff. It's very loose. It's very artistical. Um, there's a lot with balance, exposure, very creative, um, out of the norm, not your typical expected images from assignments, which I love. He's, an, he's probably one of my favorite all-rounded photographers with sports, features, all kinds of stuff. Um, very good. Um, I love portraits, Walter Eos Jr. from Sports Illustrated. Mm. I, lo I love his... Known for the swimsuit issue, yeah, I think, by yep. most, right? Um, so he has some great stuff. Um, you know, there's, there's all kinds of stuff. I love looking at the New York Times, the Lens blog. Um, there's a site called Photo A Day, which I absolutely love, where, you know, it's an organization of volunteer or photojournalists throughout the whole world that, um, you know, submit pictures and they pick a photo each day and showcase it. Um, it's, it's bizarre, you know, a little bit. It, you know, there's photography, there's all different kinds of photography, you know, landscape, sports, you know, fine art, portrait. Um, I feel like I'm a combination of everything. Um, so I, I love looking at photographs. I mean, I'm the guy that buys the magazine to look at the pictures first, reads the newspaper, looks at the pictures first, you know. I read, you know, I'm drawn into that image. Well, you know, photography is, is in some ways, hotter now than ever. Bad photography, <laughs> amateur photography. Uh, you know, everybody has a cell phone with a camera in it. Everybody has a Facebook page. There's Flickr and all, all the other kind of stuff. W what are your thoughts about that? I mean, is it just basically if you're a great musician and you hear a lot of people trying to play the accordion badly, it drives you crazy? Is that, or, or do you really kind of look for stuff in there? We have a saying, and saying nowadays it's quantity, not quality. Uh, everyone wants to take pictures, and that's fine. Um, but, you know, there's a lot that goes into that separates the good from the bad. You know, obviously, cameras, lenses, the way we see things, the way we capture the technical aspects. Um, do, do I like the, you know, how 
quick and easy a you know picture from a cell phone is? Well, not really, but I do it sometimes of family or something. But um, nowadays, you know, with some of the camera phones, um, pretty cool stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean, it is what it is. It's the generation, it's all about fast, fast, fast. They want it right away. You know, that's why Twitter, Facebook, and all that stuff has just exploded. Um, but you know, I, like I said, I'm old school. I like seeing that picture in the paper and hanging on to that. And, um, that's probably one of the biggest joys is, is seeing. You know, I always, I always joke with a couple of buddies on what it would be like to work for a wire agency. Never really wanted to do it just because I never know where the photo is going to go. You know, I need to see that photo on a piece of paper or something. There's no better feeling than seeing one of your pictures that you like four columns or five columns, six columns across the paper. You know, that's the best feeling. Or seeing walking past a room and seeing one of your pictures hanging up on the wall that was cut out from the paper. That's cool. So, I you know, the multimedia, is, it is what it is. Um, you know, people really want that approach, you know, all those with the phones and everything, and that's fine, but um, I, I like the old, I'm old school, kind of. Not a fan of the MySpace uh, camera angle? Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if anybody is. Well, you know, how did you get here? I mean, how did you wind up doing this? Did you always want to be a photographer? Do you call it the photographer trading cards growing up or anything like yeah, that? Yeah, no. Um, I went to school, you know, a small school in Dubuque, Iowa, Clark College. Oh, sure. Yeah. And I basically had a beginner's photography class and an advanced photography class. Um, they didn't offer it as a major. Um, I have a major in communications, emphasis in advertising and public relations. Um, when I was at school, I had a good buddy, Mark Van Osdell, who was a professor. Um, and he used to do photography for the, for the school. He taught the photography classes. and. You know, he asked me to, to shoot an assignment for him once because he had to leave, and I must have done something good because um, he really liked what I did. So then he told the newspaper editor, hey, this you know, kid, you know, I think has what it takes. And, you know, I ended up just working for the school newspaper and then the school magazine, and, you know, and I won, like, a, a grant when I left, which was cool. Um, and then out of college, you know, I was applying to work at like an ad firm or something, and you know, I didn't get any <laughs> looks. <laughs> and uh, you know, ironically, my dad, you know, emailed me this position at this weekly newspaper in southern Wisconsin, and I called and I went in, and he gave me four rolls of film and he told me, "Let's see what you got." And I went out and shot and came back and they liked my stuff and so I worked at uh, a place called Southern Lakes Media for two years, a weekly right out of college. And then from there, um, I really kind of really liked what I was doing. And some of my assignments, some bigger newspapers like the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel, Racine Journal Times would be there and one, I remember seeing this one guy named Jim Sislerick who would come you know, I was based in Burlington, Wisconsin, and he came to a high school game with the biggest lens I've ever seen. I was like, that's cool. <laughs> and uh, just watching him and just that, you know, and I was like, that's what I want to do. So I got to know them, Jim Sislerick and Mark Hertzberg from the Racine Journal Times, and I really wanted to try to get to a, a daily newspaper because, you know, that's what they told me. You need to take your stepping stones, and I ended up getting hired at the Beloit Daily News thanks to Mark Hertzberg for putting in a good word for me. And those years were probably, at the Blake Daily News, two years that I earned my paycheck and then some. <laughs> you know, it wasn't, you know, I'm not in this business for the money. <laughs> it's for the love. And uh, the Blake Daily News, it was a grind. You know, I had to come up with two photos every single day. They didn't use any wire photos. So um, I would drive around, we call it enterprising. So I was like the enterprise king. And I would put my work on the wire, you know, other papers would pick it up. Um, and I worked two years there, and then I got hired in Green Bay in 02. Fortunately, we're out of time. But uh, I hope that you've enjoyed our show. Thank you very much for being on it. Until next time, I'm Kevin Quinn. Best wishes for good conversations from St. Norbert College. <laughs>